we need to be encouraged by the silver linings in times of crisis and transition. We're seeing the end of the Western world. We're seeing potentially the decline of the American Republic. All over the place, we can see things that are sad, in crisis, or transition. And not surprisingly, many Christians are demoralized. But there are, in every great time of crisis, especially the big ones in times of transition, take the collapse of Rome. There are silver linings. First, there is always a shaking of false identifications that were not as biblical as people thought. When St. Augustine wrote, the Vandals were at the gates of Carthage. But when he wrote his great book, The City of God, the problem wasn't just the pagans saying, oh, this is the Christian fault. The problem was Christians had identified the church with Rome. It was now Christian Rome. So does Rome spread, the gospel would spread. And Augustine had to break that awful false identification. The city of God is different from the city of man. The city of God endures, the city of man never. We're members of the city of God, not of the city of man. And there will be identifications in American history that were not as biblical as Christians thought, and they will go and thank God. Because the other side of that is the times of crisis through our great new vision, such as Augustine's, the city of God, and so on. But let me draw this to a conclusion. We are 9,000 or so this morning. Can you imagine being a part of that little group that heard the Great Commission the first time? Whether 50, whether 100, whether 1,000, we don't know. Not very many. Persecuted by their own people, despised and soon to be persecuted by their imperial masters. What must it have heard like to think that they were making disciples of all nations? If you look around the world today, especially from the Western viewpoint, it looks unlikely all over again. But thank God, we're not called to be successful. We're called to be faithful and to do it with song. You had great John Lennox earlier. Many of you have probably seen John debating with people like Richard Dawkins. There was a wonderful time when Dawkins was debating with Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, the chief rabbi of Great Britain. And Rabbi Sachs said to Dawkins, the atheist, Richard, Religion is music, and you are tone deaf. <laughs> and Dawkins said, you're right. I am tone deaf. But then he added, but there is no music. I am tone deaf, but there is no music. We, of course, know he was dead wrong. Dead wrong. But how sad and how revealing. The Jews and we followers of Jesus put a premium on the word in creation, in revelation, in communication. We listening to the Lord, we praying to the Lord. Words. No one values words and the word like we do. But while words are the language of the mind. Music is the language of the soul. I'm not a musician, sadly. I love words. I speak and I write. But words can only say so much, whereas music says the unsayable. The rabbis say there are 10 songs in the Old Testament. From the song of Miriam, many others. And the final song, the tenth song, has not yet been sung, the song of the Messiah. And we, of course, as we've been so gloriously reminded in these days, we believe passionately in song. 
And so I would just say to us at the end, as we look out on our world, seeking to be inspired and challenged by our Lord's command to make disciples of all nations, and there's nowhere harder than right here, and especially in Europe. Nowhere harder than the West today, because it's burnt over ground. God is greater than all. God can be trusted in every situation. Sisters and brothers, have no fear. Have faith in God. Move out with a great commission and with a song in your hearts.